beautiful people welcome once again to HN Clothings welcome to another wonderful video okay so guys thank you so much for all the love on the videos we I have put out so far and then this is like a follow-up this is like a part two of this particular video that I made okay so it's a follow-up on beginners mistakes in sewing and how to level up your sewing this year there are some simple things that you need to already know to be able to tackle and get best results when you create your outfit yeah so i read your comments i see most of you have still have issues with zipper fixing i think i'm going to make a dedicated tutorial just addressing zippers how to install zippers okay I'll make a dedicated tutorial for that. I saw someone also put in the comments that um, how to tackle crotch problem. So for trouser crotch, I would also dedicate a video to that. But here, I'm going to be looking at some other mistakes, not mistakes, some other things you need to learn and unlearn, right, in this video. So if this is something you're interested, Please do keep on watching. Um, yeah, thank you so much for those supporting the channel through channel membership. What else? Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to like. Comment below if you have any other challenge you want us to discuss in this video, and we're gonna see. <laughs> Let's start. All right. So the first tip and trick we're going to be looking at is how to properly finish the hem of a flare right so we can cut flare in different kind of fabrics it could be in cotton that's your ankara it could be in silk in chiffon how do you properly finish it so that you don't have this wavy looking rough kind of flare bottom at the hem so this is what I want us to address here. And I have some fabrics that we'll be using specifically for this demonstration. I have chiffon here. I'm gonna cut a chiffon flare just now. We know how to cut flares. If you do not know anything about flares or you want to also learn in depth on flares, I have videos dedicated just for flares. I'll leave them up here. Even for that trouser I spoke about, I have videos on trousers. So I'll also leave them, all these links in the description below. When you watch them all, even for zippers, when you watch them all and um, you still are not getting it or you still find challenges in it, just let me know and then we'll take it from there. So I'm just folding my flares. I'm just cutting a very simple one because the idea is how do we even finish this flare up properly? That's what we want to um, decipher in this video. So here is my flare. It's a circular flare I'll be cutting. Let me quickly grab my scissors. Okay, so. All right, so I've cut this flare. I even cut a double flare. We'll use it anyway, just to see how to properly finish the hem of the flare. Guys, you just see my latest addition in the sewing space. Okay, so what's different from what we can skip? <laughs> Tell me what's different. Yeah? Yes, so you got it right. <laughs> I don't know if you got it right or not, but I'm sure you did. So, this beauty here, right? it's actually so very beautiful and i'm sure it's bringing out the color in the space because you see everything is like white and gray but the gold is just fitting the pop pop is even popping more than this did you did you notice it let me know if you noticed it in the comments below please write it down and ah, guys when we got to the store when we went to where we wanted to get it from how am i saying we 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 well those that don't know if you follow me on instagram you know what i'm saying we 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 okay so when we got there <laughs> it was quite pricey can you just believe that just because it's vast alone very pricey but yeah we got what we needed i got i think got it for about <sighs> it was just pricey guys it was pricey so 
that was the story behind this i i knew i, knew I we had to put something there and yeah i'm sure it's let me know if this is okay or you want something different what else do you think we can put in this place give me ideas oh we need to decorate this place finish oh give me ideas the walls are still plain what else what else okay thank you let's move on to the video <laughs> all right so we want to go over to the sewing machine to see how to properly finish the hem of a flare all right guys so first thing we're going to do is do a rolled hem this is my flare you want to just fold it very tiny you're going to make sure that you sew this flare like twice hold it very tiny like this you see the main thing just fold it tiny you don't go all out and do bam bam all together you will not have a very good flare so you want to make it tiny this way okay this way just like one eighth of an inch that's half of quarter inch that's what i mean something like this so we'll place it under the um presser foot okay and then we we'll start sewing just take it i'm using the contrasting thread so that you see it. just take it slowly and tinily tinily you want to do it just once first don't double it yet though just once first okay some places will be quite difficult to maneuver but just keep going do what you need to keep going do what you need to all right this way i hope you're getting the gist so you can see how it's forming already keep going that way just tinyly I know it's going to be overwhelming, especially when you have a very big, voluminous, like maybe you're making a wedding gown or something. I know it's going to be, that's why you just go maybe for weaving, just to weave the bottom. But if you want to be more detailed and all, please do this. Make sure to get back to where you started from here for me great so what we'll do next is to get our scissors you want to get your scissors and just snip cut the thread off and then you want to trim trim the excess you have there it will help trim the excess just go around trim like close to the stitch line be careful so that you don't cut through the main fabric just that extra that is poking out there it will help to reduce the bulk by the time you'll be doing that so don't also cut your stitches open yet though <laughs> so something like this now you see it's kind of bulky it's much imagine if you were to fold on it it will be creating bulk that's why you need to go in and reduce reduce the stitches okay so i have trimmed very i've trimmed all the excess um sewing allowance we have there so i'm having just this tiny thing round it now you just want to go back and just fold it that way and then your seam will lay flat once you iron everything up do not just fold it into two at once you'll always have a very uneven wavy kind of like hem flare hem and it's not going to be looking appealing so follow the steps and be sure to get a perfect hem flare hem <laughs> okay so let me sew up now
okay guys so this is what the finished result look like can you see how it looks that's why it's not even iron gate so this is what i used to actually have a very flat flare hem bottle in any flare design i'm doing this is the technique i use and i've just shared the secrets with you just go on to iron this properly and voila you are good to go all right guys so for the next um tip and trick to leveling up your sewing game we're going to look at the right way to cut a band okay there's the wrong way not the wrong way there's a way that is perfect okay such that it's always snatched on the waist that's your waistband for your skirt or a trouser so that's what we want to look at now first things first you grab your fabric this is the fabric i'm going to be using for this particular um video if you've not seen where I made a padded skirt, right, using this fabric, we made a padded skirt, please click on this link up here to watch the video. We are going to be cutting the band for the skirt, right? How to cut a snatched waistband. So, we're using freehand, I'm not going to be using pattern. Okay. First things first, you want to fold your fabric into two. I'm looking for the yeah so i'll fold my fabric into two this way okay i'm folding in this way because um my the waist according to the waist of my client so just fold the fabric into two like this you don't normally for bands we usually just cut a rectangular strip according to the waist of the according to the waist of the skirt we're making so for instance if you're making a skirt of like um 26 inches waist you'll just cut the 26 inches band and include the allowance for putting the hook and eye and all of that but for this one you actually need to section it you need to cut the front first then you cut the back cut the front first then you cut the back so let us do the front first for the front first, we fold this fabric into two. Why are we folding it into two? The one that you can see in front and then the one underneath it. Once you fold it into two, you can fold it again into four, like this. Beautiful. Now, after folding this fabric into four, this four is just for the front alone. We are going to measure how wide we want the band to be. My band is going to be a two inches wide band. So I'm going to measure two inches, right? Two inches. I'm going to put half inch at the top for sewing it, half inch at the bottom also for sewing it. Okay, so that's three inches in total. So I'll mark that three inches here. I also want to measure the width, right? The skirt waist is 26 inches, okay? So when I have 26 inches, I divide that by four, which is six and a half inches. So I'll put my measuring tape and mark exactly six and a half, which is here for me. There's a one inch sewing allowance, which I'll put there. That will give me seven and a half inches, right? This is what I should be having in total. So I'll just rule a straight line, a vertical line, seven and a half inches. For the skirt waist at the top here, you want to actually snatch it more than this. Snatching it means you come inwards, just measure half an inch inwards. Do this especially when you sew um, skirt waistband and then you see that it's not properly um, holding the person's tummy well. You actually need to take this extra step. So just come in by half an inch, that's all you need to do. And then connect it to the bottom part here, which is that um, seven and a half inches we have there. Just connect it. Just snatch it in by half an inch. That will make a whole lot of difference. That's all you need to do. Then I'm also going to come up by half inch here. Remember that for the bottom, we went down by half inch. So I'll come up by half inch. And here to do the same thing because this is the front. So this is what I'll do to snatch it. I hope you get, I went down by half an inch. So, snatch this inwards and then this band is for the front. So, 
This band is for the front. So I'll just open it up completely to have my front waistband. This is my front waistband, okay? So let's quickly do the back waistband. For the back waistband, almost like what we did for the front, fold it again into two, like so. Then fold on itself. Like this. Great. Now that we have this, we're going to go right ahead to take the measurement. So for the band, we have the zipper or the part where the hook and high eye will be, where the closure will be. You want to determine how many inches you want to use for the closure area. I'll just use like one inch for the closure area, which is right here. Draw a vertical line, signifying the one inch. So the measurements begin from that one inch. Remember that the division of the sketch waist by four is six and a half inches. I'll mark that here and then I need one inch for my sewing allowance which is just right here okay the next thing I want to do is make sure that same seven and a half inches that we have down measure it up so that you have a vertical straight line the next thing we're going to do is measure three inches with why are we using three inches half inch to join the band to the skirt at the bottom and half inch to join these separate pieces <laughs> This separate pieces together at the top so this is what I have here same thing three inches up here now for it to be properly snatched you don't just want the rectangle like that on the side seam this is the side seam. remember this is like the closure area which is like the center back on the side seam which is also the side seam we did for the front you want to just come in by half an inch and then just do a um, a tightening that's coming by half an inch to just snatch it more that will help make it fit properly to your client's body now this one you don't need to lower anything just a straight one so we cut this we cut this and we open up this because this is where the closure will be. Open it up. Next, separate the pieces. Separate the pieces here. Separate the pieces here. So once you've separated the pieces, opened it up, this is what you'll be having. You just want to go ahead to iron stay to this. This is the back piece. And this is the front piece I hope you can tell the difference let me put it this way so you're seeing it clearly so the back is just straight but it's slanted on the side while the front goes it stops slopes down a little and at the top so let's iron uh, interfacing you use paper stay for the interfacing for skirt bands use paper stay I'll iron the interfacing to both the interior one the one that will be inside of a garment and the exterior one put interface in there iron it properly you can use paper stay you can use tissue stay just give it some stability before we go on to joining it together don't worry i'm going to show you how to join them together but let's iron this quickly all right so right now i have ironed the interface into every single part of this band that's what we can see now so remember that the one long strip here that does not have any joining is the front so i have the front main one that i'll be showing on the outer part and the front lining so i'll just arrange them this way and then i'm going to take the back pieces the back side seam the left back side seam should match to the left um front piece so this one too will match this way and then do the same thing for the other one which will be here to here and here to here so i hope you get the gist 
Now, I will just sew this side seam one inch. Remember, one inch was the sewing allowance. One inch, one inch, and then we'll have one long strip like this. One long strip like this, right? So let me go and sew it one inch, one inch, and I'll come back to show you what next to do. All right, so here is what I have. You can see that this is not totally straight. If you had just cut the rectangular piece, you just have one straight thing, bam. But now it's kind of like um, going upwards, right? That is how the waist should be. So this is the one inch that I've sewn. I can decide to trim just a little bit. Can decide to trim. One good thing about putting your sewing allowance a little bit more is so that you can always cross check your measurement see if you need to um increase like reduce or something you get the gist so not everyone is perfect you always need to leave room for um errors especially when you're starting out now i'm going to put it right side facing right side i just want to kiss both of them together and then i just want to sew right on the top there so I'll sew it half inch because it was a half inch allowance we left. So you half inch up top there, right? And then you have one piece like this, which you would have ironed. And then this bottom part will be what will be put into the waist. All right, guys. So for this particular next tip and trick, we're going to be playing a game. And it's a fabric game, okay? So I'm going to be putting different styles up here. And then I want you to guess in the comment section below what kind of fabric do you think will be best to achieve this style? Let's start with this first style design. So what kind of fabric do you think will be best for this particular design? Okay? You can see it has a drapey feel, a kind of soft, lush feel. So... Let me know for style one, write in the comment section below. I'm going to be giving your answers in the comments as well, if you're correct or not, okay? Let's look at this next style here, right? What kind of fabric do you think will be best suitable to actually achieve the perfect fit for this style? I have lots of designs. By the way, let me even, <laughs> let's even talk. Do you even know your fabrics? Do you know your fabrics, the qualities of your fabrics, what your fabric can do, the best style that will go for each fabric as a designer? This is one of the things that you should know before you even start working on any design. You need to understand fabrics, their qualities, what styles will best suit them, and then you will always have good results when you actually understand the fabric you're working with, right? makes sense right yeah i'm sure it makes sense so please try as much as possible to get different fabrics check out the qualities the characteristics what best will suit it and then you will always be able to create a masterpiece right let's just look through some fabrics here and let me give you some characteristics of this fabric because you need to know them to achieve good results okay sometimes it's not even the sewing technique that is the issue it is actually knowing the right fabric to use for the sewing technique that you need to conquer <laughs> all right let's move over to the table okay so the first fabric is this beautiful ankara fabric and we know that the ankara fabric is very versatile beginners right will always link towards ankara because it's easy to work with when you cut something it stays that way it's stable it's not stretching it's not draping it's not drawing it's just stable so when you want to try something new except if you're doing something that will require another kind of fabric you can always opt for your cotton fabric ankara falls under the cotton category Let's look at some other fabrics. This is sequin, right? So sequin, beautiful for, um, you can see that it's, it's kind of having that soft kind of feel. So imagine if you do not know about fabrics and then you pick up sequin to work with. At the end of the day, you may even damage your client's 
um, outfit because you are not even picking the right style for the fabric. So please, Google is your friend. Google to know your fabrics and the styles that will best work with it. This is chiffon. You all know that some of us, we run away from working with chiffon because of the way it, it's, it actually is flimsy. It's flimsy, you want to put colors. Imagine using chiffon to sew a shirt, right? Like this pajama set that is raining now. You're using chiffon. You actually need to understand the quality, the characteristics of your fabric for best results, okay? Same thing with silk. This is silk. You can see already by the feel. Uh, I wish you can feel it. By the feel, you can see already, right? See, beautiful. They can be used for designs, but you need to know the right one to use it for. Another silk fabric, and then this is crepe. So all these are different fabrics that you need to know, understand them, so that you can work beautifully with them. Now let's move on to the next sewing tip and trick you need to know as a designer. Interfaces. Yes, you heard me right. See, eh? I cannot overemphasize the importance of interfaces, right? Interfaces are not just used for padding the bust area when you are doing princess dance or padding a corset. Padding is not just for padding things. Interfaces are used in various designs these days. You can use it in your, um, for instance, this kind of dress you're seeing here. If you use paper stick, this kind of stick, best believe that that thing will fall. It's not going to stand the way you can see it on the screen, right? Okay, so this one now, you can't use paper stick. There are different interfaces. You need to try your hands on them. This is um, hair stay, tissue stay, um, wordings, all these interfaces. You need to try, and I just recently stopped up on this wording too. You need to try your hand on them okay so by the time you try your hands on interfacing know what best to suit what then you are a step closer to creating beautiful outfits that will always look good any day anytime finally let's talk about the last tip and trick you need to know as a designer to level up your sewing game and that is the proper way to use a needle and a thread. Guys, we are going to be attaching a button to this particular um, fabric. Now, the proper way to sew with a needle and a thread is to be light-handed. What do I mean by light-handed? Most times, as beginners, we tend to be very heavy on the stitch especially when we're using our hand so maybe you're beading you're doing things that have to involve needle work you want to try as much as possible to be light-handed do not sew tightly when you sew tightly you would have the seams that you have that point looking it won't look good at all it'll be looking you will see the tension yeah you have tension lines. That's what. I, that's what. That's the right word I was looking for. You'll be having tension lines. Don't be scared and say, "Oh, because I I don't want it to cut or I don't want it to get loosened up quickly." And that you see how light-handed I am. Just go in and out, light-handed with it, right? Let's look at how the back here. See. You are not seeing tightness, tension, pulling, as if I'm strangling up the fabric. Be light-handed, right? It's going to be secure. As long as you run multiple stitch lines where you are sewing. As long as it's not just maybe one stitch line. For instance, you do maybe like two or three stitches, you will always have a very nice 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 um look to your outfit it looks effortless it looks classy it looks well properly crafted okay so you can see this see how those button is and look at the other side right it looks properly crafted okay 
this is what you want to have do not go on to pull and then you start seeing tension lines on the fabric okay so guys if you did enjoy this tutorial do not forget to give me a huge thumbs up if you feel these tips and tricks that i have shared on here today is very helpful needed will change your sewing game please give me a thumbs up do not forget to subscribe if you get to thank you so much for watching thank you for being the best so far till we see in the next tutorial stay safe god bless you all bye